Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 4 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to be looking at cutting all the parts and a test assembly. Let's buckle up. In working through the original plans and, and adapting them to work for my simpit, I'm now clear on the dimensions I need for each part. So it's just a question of uh, getting to my local wood store, getting the MDF, and I'm quite fortunate that they offer a free cutting service, so I'll be able to get all of them cut to the dimensions needed. I'll just bring up on screen the dimensions of the parts we're going to be making. Ideally, they'd all be produced on a CNC, but some of them are quite big and just simply too big to, to be done that way. So parts 1, 2 and 3 will be done on a CNC machine and they're within the bed size of that. But parts 4 through 9 will need to be done by hand uh, and using other tools. So of the three parts that we can CNC machine, we've got part 1 that sees stick and fuse base. Part 2, that's a few sides left and right. And then the third part, which is the fuse fascia. So really parts 1, 2 and 3 are all of this middle section here. So I've used Cut2D uh, for the CAD CAM file, ready to machine into the MDF. We can see on the 2D image here the four mounting holes which I hold on to the stick base. And then you can also see the vector lines which show the channel that will be made into the MDF through which the USB cable wiring can sit. And here's a preview of the machined piece of wood. We're looking at it upside down at the moment. And this is where the wire will come through and sit. If we just rotate this over you can see how the piece will look from the top down view as it's inserted into the frame. On to part two, so a square piece of MDF which is machined uh, on the outside of these vector lines and there'll be two of these because obviously part two consists of few sides left and right and you can see that this end here looks like it doesn't sit at the same level but that's just because this end sits on part one. And then finally we get part three which is the fuse fascia and what we're really looking at here are these six holes that have an extra circle on the outside and that indicates where it's counterbore. So we can attach this to the frame whereby the screws will sit flush and the extra ones I'm highlighting here now will then be available to attach the TISL panel and the circuit breaker panel into. And a quick glance at the 3D image here. Just taking a minute to render. Let's just zoom in and have a look at these counter bores. So it just seems a nice way that when I later on mount the TISL panel and the circuit breaker panel, I don't need to be taking the unit off to attach it. This fascia will sit into the frame and then allow me to separately install the other panels into it. So these are all of the individual parts which I've got cut at my local wood store. If we just take a minute now and have a close look at them. So during the build process I'm clear on which each part is. I've just put a little sticky note on each one just with the dimensions I'm working to. I think 18mm MDF is definitely the about the right thickness. Um, it's not going overkill, but it definitely will give that frame quite a lot of strength. Some of the large sheets of MDF at the wood store are 2400 millimeters by 1200 millimeters, so I've had enough uh, material to cut all of these out as needed, but also to have a few spare because it is quite possible when I'm um, cutting these to size uh, and shape that some may get damaged and it'd be handy to have a spare. So we've got the back piece now, which is the single biggest piece in the frame. 
834 by 876 so quite a piece of material we've got a 9mm sheet here this is for the outer rudder so that's left and right that's one of the items that I've increased in thickness outer sides of the original 18mm but then what we come to now is the shelf now it says 9mm it's actually it, it will be although that's now been cut as a spare item I'm still looking to change that one to a 12mm just to give it some extra strength so with all the pieces of wood and the cut 2D files I can now start on parts 1 to 3 so this is part two, just being cut out on the mill. So that's what's great about CNC's, it just cuts it absolutely perfectly. So if we now move on to part three, the fuse fascia. And you can see the counterbores, as mentioned, that will allow it to be held to the frame, but without it then being taken off the the panels can be attached to it. All the other pieces are now cut by hand and it's just a question of taking each piece of wood, drawing on all of the markings for the cut lines and then as you can see I've just made a whole heap of notes on post it stuck to them that just confirm all the measurements and all the angles needed. So in the future, the tenth part will be the main front fascia that will lean slightly back. So you can see here the jigs that were put in place to ensure a perfect angular cut. It took a bit of time, but it worked really well. Parts four and five were very straightforward to put together because they were already cut to exactly the right size. So it was just a question of getting the corner brackets you can see to secure them and hold them together. Part 1 is then aligned to part 4 so that the mountain holes can be marked out and they can be attached together. So the method used to connect everything together is machine screws entering into brass inserts and it has worked really well. This is myself and my father-in-law just putting in place the brass inserts that were just coating with a bit of glue for good measure. We then tap it in place with what the posh name would be a brass insertion tool or what's known around these parts as a Birmingham screwdriver. With all the pieces cut and the inserts in place we can start putting it together and it's really good to see it coming along. And if you look at the back of part 7 which is rudder size left and right you can see there are some little L brackets put on either side just to hold it in place again just to stop any possible sideways movement. I think that along with these extra blocks of wood between parts 7 and 8 have definitely made the whole frame a lot more stable and less likely to get damaged particularly when moving around and now that I know it all fits together correctly it's time to take it all apart prime it, paint it and then reassemble it again and if we now look once again at the 9 parts but at this point that they're completed and I'll, I'll take a moment to pause briefly on all the key parts so anyone that's watching this, perhaps with a view of making one themselves, can see exactly how I, I did each part. I think it was definitely a really good decision to use a brass insert. Um, and I'll put up on screen now just a few more details around that. So we can see now an image of a typical brass insert up close. But then also I did use brass inserts of a few different sizes according on which part of the, of the front dash it sat in. And here's the dimensions of the ones I used along with the size of the hole f uh, needed for it to fit into properly. And it's probably worth mentioning now that although I use mostly M3 and M4 size brass inserts, I did also use eight single M6 inserts that you can see now, which are to hold the SATEC rudder pedals. So I used uh, long thread 
M6 countersunk black screws that drop through to then secure it in place. And we'll just take a look now at the final few parts. And the shelf you see now was 12mm in the end. I did finish with that size. So we can see a couple of side by side photos here. The first on the left showing the panels after they've all been sanded and primed. And then on the right after they've had the first couple of coats of black primer. And when the surface has been fully primed, I then move on to using a matte black spray to give it a, a good number of coats until it gives it the finish needed. So I've been spraying these outdoors and then letting them dry in a well ventilated area. And I think it's just a question of making sure that you've got some of the right kit to be able to see what you're doing, particularly if it's going dark outside as it's been on some of the evenings here. Um, but also you're not breathing all those fumes. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll we'll put all of this together.